So how good is the Sony a7R 5 Well, I just took it on a big trip to West Texas to test out all of the photo and video features. By the way, if you haven't watched that video, it's a great way to see what this camera is capable of. And I'm proud of it. You should watch it. Click it up here. Anyway, I spent a lot of time getting to explore this camera in the past two months, and I've got five thoughts that I think are worth talking about. Now, I'll say there's tons of excellent reviews on this camera already, so I won't get into too much detail on everything, but I wanna focus on the things that I think are not emphasized enough or maybe left unsaid. So the headline that you've probably heard from everybody, AI autofocus. Yeah, it's real and it's real good. Look, I have to say, for the past few generations of owning Sony cameras, I've had almost no issues with autofocus. It's just not much of a thing anymore because everything's getting so good nowadays. But this, it brings it from like the 90% to something like 95, 98% effective. And I think the bigger headline here is that it works not with video. But I think there's a key here to actually setting up your settings for the best success here. I shoot mostly landscape, travel, lifestyle photos of daily life. And for the most part, that means that I don't need the crazy tracking focus. I prefer to use single shot autofocus. So finding where I want the focus to be set, using back button focus, getting my focus set, and then capturing the photo. So if the AI doesn't recognize my autofocus, it means I'm still gonna hit the mark and be able to focus on something that's not a plane, train, insect, person, you know, whatever. But here's the problem with it, is I actually like being able to go from that very quickly, be able to take a photo of somebody I'm traveling with or some sort of animal or something moving in the scene. And here's what's great about this camera. Now I can quickly do that. I can have my main focus set as single shot autofocus with my little box that I move around and aim. And then at any point in time, I can press a separate custom button to quickly turn autofocus tracking on. I love this. I think it's hands down the most effective and best way to use focus on this camera. So if you wanna use my settings, what I recommend, turn on single shot autofocus set your tracking as a small or medium adjustable area, and then set a custom button to be tracking on plus autofocus on. I like to use the lens, totally up to you what, what button you want mapped. The second big thing, image stabilization, which they harped on heavily in the introduction, it's actually a big deal. It's no joke, it works exceptionally well for photos. So maybe I wasn't seeing all the right reviews, but when the camera first came out, it seemed like everyone had mentioned this, but didn't really discuss such a notable improvement. But what I found was while I was in West Texas climbing way before sunrise, I was taking some landscape photos at one fifth, one sixth of a second, and everything was coming out tack sharp, which I can never shoot. I'm not steady enough. I had caffeine, my hands were shaking. Not a chance normally. But this new stabilization is quite effective. It works very well and this comes in very handy because it just means you have less need of a tripod and more of your images are gonna come out sharp. This benefit does translate to video. It seems to do a better job than the previous a7 IV, but it doesn't seem to be a noticeable upgrade from what's already in things like the FX3, the Sony a7S III or a7 IV. It's good not remarkable when it comes to video. Now, the exception that I haven't been able to test is with an optically stabilized lens. My understanding is you stack that technology, things only get better. So I'll have to get back on that one. My understanding is that it actually is a noticeable improvement, but in terms of the just regular image stabilization, don't expect anything outrageous, but expect something useful. So the third thing here is video quality is great, but don't pick this camera specifically for video alone. This is actually the, the most important upgrade to me because the previous generation, the a7R4, was an incredible stills camera. 
but the video quality was lacking and it was lacking mostly because of the codec. Not having enough data to be able to manipulate much in post and the color science seemed to just not be of quality compared to Sony's other cameras or other cameras in the market. So the headline for me, we finally have 4K 10-bit 422 in a good codec. It seems to work very well. Now this isn't, again, the video-centric camera, so there's some caveats. You just have to expect to be able to work with weird crops and specific frame rates. So there's 8K. 8K is great but there's a 1.24 times crop. It's only 10 bit 420. And it's got really bad rolling shutter. So you can't really use it for anything action oriented with a lot of camera or scene movement. The 4K Super 35 is very sharp. It's downscaled from 6K, but it also has a lot of rolling shutter. There is 4K 60, but like the 8K, it has a 1.24 times crop. Um, and this is somewhere in between Super 35 and full frame, but the footage looks okay. This is binned image, so it's not as sharp as the 8K or 4K Super 35, but it still looks good. And then the most important thing for me is the 4K full frame, 24 frames per second, or 25 if you're a pal, is good. It's not exceptional, but it's very good and I think it works perfectly hand in hand with almost all of the other Sony cameras. This is all really confusing and it gets confusing because depending on what you're doing, you're gonna crop in at a different level or you have different concerns that you have to worry about when you're shooting with it. So here's the simple breakdown. Use 4K 24 full frame for most things. Your image should be pretty good. If you need a higher frame rate, 4K 60 will work but it's gonna crop in a little bit. And then if you have a scene with very limited movement or you don't expect to move the camera much, then it's a good time to consider using Super 35 or the 8K. But otherwise, because of the rolling shutter, I would stick to 4K 24. I also wanna note that the, the noise profile in this camera stood out to me. It just doesn't have as incredible of noise performance as something like the A7S 3 or the FX3. Um, it's native ISO at 800 has just a little bit more noise in the shadow than the base ISO for the A7S III. And then when you bring it up to the second ISO, which is only 2,500, not the outrageous ceiling of the other cameras, it's good, but it's still noisier than those. But I do want to add here with the video, now that they've added sort of all of the other features to the video, so improved white balance, the image stabilization, the lens compensation, stabilization metadata, the updated display. I mean, all across the board, this camera is pretty good for anything you wanna do in terms of video. And I think it's more than enough for my needs. And the last thing, it has that autofocus. There isn't a camera that's as good at video autofocus as the a7R5. The fourth thing that I think is worth mentioning is the updates to the body are actually huge. Now, this one's always tough because innovation's so incremental. It's like we've just gotten a couple little things, but all of the little things are exceptional. It's like someone at Sony said, hey, let's just put everything into this. So the 9.4 million dot EVF, let's put a flip screen, but let's also put a tilt screen. Let's put in a bigger LCD panel, the touchability, the switch that lets you go from photo to video quickly, the non-jangly camera straps, full-size HDMI, everything, all the bells and whistles. And what it translates to is this is just a camera that feels like it, it has all the things that have been very nice to use in previous Sony cameras. And look, people are going bananas over this LCD screen, but that's because it really is great. It's awesome, it's great. And there's a reason people are going bananas over it. And then the last thing is, it's kind of like the body. They've added all the software features in too. So it has all the elements like the lens compensation. It has the pixel shift shooting. 
which in, I wouldn't use on most occasions, but is cool to have. Um, and then they kind of added the software element that actually makes it more practical because before it's impossible to find a scene with no movement. Now that I know I can do this, and if there's a little bit of movement, the software can manage that, it might be something that I use more often. The focus bracketing, which I'll cover in another video, is very handy. It's super useful for things like landscape or macro photography, and I'm surprised it's something that I found it's worth using. It has the creative looks, which are not something I ever would use in terms of final product, but they're fun to use because they give you an ability to create a look while you're shooting. And I find I can kind of create something a little bit closer to what I think the end product will look like while I'm shooting. And that makes it a little bit more fun experience. Have you ever tried this by the way? Still shooting raws, but changing your creative look to something different? You should try it. It makes the shooting experience a bit more fun. So what's the overall consensus? I think with all these little pieces, the camera is ridiculous. It's out of the question, an incredible camera. And I think it's got everything you need to be very good a video, and certainly everything to be exceptional with stills. And I'll mention, this isn't, by the way, a great sports camera. Sports photography or, or high frame rate stuff's not in my wheelhouse, so I can't speak to it, but I know this isn't necessarily the camera for that. But for everything else, I could see this being a real workhorse. Before I go, seriously, watch the video I put together on going through West Texas. I think you'll be impressed because it shows exactly what this camera is capable of, and I'm proud of it, so check it out. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks.